Psalms, chapter 78, a mischief, which is instruction of Asaph. And we looked at Asaph last few nights, who he is. He's a prophet. He's the time of David. And we're only going to do half this chapter. Sometimes we break a chapter in half or however nice we need to do it because we're not in a rush. We want to learn the Bible and the best way to do it is do it what we can, what time we got. Give ear. Listen up. Pay attention. Oh, my people, Israelites. To my law, God's law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. And this is God speaking. Asaph speaking for God. Then we're going to get tonight and Lord willing tomorrow night. We're going to get a history of the nation of Israel. We're going to get the proper biblical history that has been untainted, unchanged. Unlike what man has done to his history. I mean, we have changed history because of one race of people don't like it. Well, that's tough. History is what it is. And I think some guy said one time, one thing if you fail, you learn from history, you're going to learn from history again. You're going to repeat what you haven't learned or what you've taught wrong. And when you teach history false, you're teaching lies. And you're guilty of being a liar. I will open my mouth. This is God speaking. I will open my mouth in parables. Matthew 13, 35. Gee, I wonder who that is. I will utter dark sayings of old. That's Jesus Christ, first advent. So God is speaking and he says in verse 2, you know what I'm going to be doing? I'm going to say parables. And that's Jesus Christ. John chapter 10 verse 6 and 16 25. God is Jesus and Jesus is God. Which we have heard and known. Well, how can they be parables? And dark sayings of old, when they've heard them, they know them. Well, it's all past tense. They've forgotten. Maybe they changed it. I mean, the Hebrews today, when they go to the temple, synagogue, many of them are not getting the true. They're getting the false. And our fathers have told us. That's what fathers are supposed to do. They're supposed to teach their children. But today we live in a world that let the public school you know, teach our children. Let other people raise our children. And they, the parents have no idea, the foggiest idea, what their children are learning. And what they have been learning. That's why we're in a mess we are in today. Now parents are all upset all worldwide. Oh, now all of a sudden I gotta take care of my brat. You were supposed to take care of your brat. And that's how you talk about your children. I've homeschooled my children from, from kindergarten. They're not brats, they're not troublemakers, they're not problems. I mean they they have they do things wrong and they it takes a lot of time and effort. But God gave you those children. He didn't give it to somebody else. And then, you know, the public school systems all over the world mess with your children and teach them other things other than God. The fathers told us. We will not hide them, the words, the history, from their children, showing to generations to come the praises of the Lord and his strength. And his wonderful work that he has done. And what's going to come forth next? The history. The history of Israel. Men don't know their history today. Men don't even know who they are. Men have no idea where their roots come from. 
And if you do hear, if you do know something, most likely what you learned today in school and the stuff that you picked, probably false. You haven't learned the truth about the Native Americans. You haven't been true the truth about African American. African American, you're supposed to be American. You're either African or you're American. You can't be both. I know you don't like that. You haven't been told the truth about the slavery issues. I mean, yeah, granted, they were terrible slave owners, but they were good slave owners too. And there were slave owners that brought their slaves to church on Sunday morning to hear the words of Jesus Christ. The law writes about a, about a man who's a servant. And he says, listen, if I love my master, I love my family. If I want to serve him, I'm going to have my ear born with a hole. I'm going to go serve him forever. That don't sound like the guy was treated wrong. And, you know, the story of George Washington cutting the cherry tree down and Martha, uh, whoever her name was, I don't care, making the, those are all lies. And look it up online, they will tell you they are lies. What is these people teaching our children? What the teachers tell their children about Daniel and Paul and uh, King David and Joseph and Abraham and Isaac, it's nothing. But they'll teach you how to sit on a mat towards Mega and cross your legs and ooga buggy yourself. That's heresy, that's junk, that's false religion, that's false. You wouldn't dare to have a Bible be opened up in the classroom of a King James Bible being taught. Not. Nah. For he, God, established a testimony in Jacob. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, not Ishmael. Not Ishmael. And appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers, that they should make them known to their children. And the law says that the fathers teach the children, and the children teach their children, and their children teach their children. And many times they, the, the writer will come up to say, well, when your children come to ask, why is this done, father? And the fathers will sit down with that child and say, this is why it's done. And they're to tell them. You know, the Bible says if a wife has a question, she's not going to the pastor or the church. She's supposed to go to the husband. Who's the husband? He's also the father of the family. The father, husband of family is supposed to teach the children, is supposed to teach his wife. He's not supposed to have a, oh, I got to have a man's name. Don't you be a man and raise up your family. We're in a day and age right now. We got live stream. Why don't you get off your butt, mister, and teach the Bible to your family? Oh, I have somebody take care of my, my children. I'll have somebody take care of my wife. And you wonder why men are deadbeats today. And lousy men. You panty wakes. Losers. You change your underwear for panties, my friend. And a man is not to wear that would pertain to a woman. You're acting like a woman. Of course, the Bible also says that too. Women will be in charge. That the generation to come might know them. This generation has come and going. Another generation and they don't know nothing. I can just imagine what the Jewish families know today. They falsify their Passover today, 2020, which has just happened last week. I guarantee they falsify that Passover because, first of all, you're supposed to go to Jerusalem. And you couldn't go to Jerusalem anyway because the whole world was put under a quarantine. And then you, you have, in America, I've been told, and it's been explained to you, you sit at your table and you got this one seat there for the 
for the Messiah to come and they got the, the plate and they got everything all arranged out, tradition and all that. It don't say anything like that in the Bible. It says, get your butt to Jerusalem. But you don't need to go to Jerusalem anymore because the Messiah has come. And about the Messiah, the angels proclaim, he is not here, he is risen, and he's seated at the right hand of the Father. And far as the Messiah, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Wonder what children know today. You know how to shoot. You know how to play video games. You know how to be men. Which should be born, who shall arise. And declare them to their children. What if we didn't have a written Bible? What would be known today from father to son to son to son to son to son? We would know nothing. And you got modern pervert Bibles out there. It teaches false and removes the blood and removes repentance. And they're making a TV program about Jesus and they got a woman playing the scene. Really? Where'd you get the idea of Jesus or woman? Oh yeah, the panty waist men today of the world. They act like women. They're sissies. Mama speaks up for them. I think it's so funny. I watched Judge Judy and the People's Court. And they got a husband and wife there. You know who does all the speaking? The wife does the speak. The guy just sits there. Uh, loser! Stand up, man! Be the man! Play the man, the Bible says, you loser! Supposed to teach your children. They that that they might set their hope in God. What are men teaching their hope? I hope I can hit baseball. I hope I can go to this concert. I hope I can drive a car. I hope I can go do it. I hope I can graduate. What about God? Who cares? The last time your parents took you to church, we don't go to church. If we go to church, we go to a worldly bebopping church. My mom goes to the, the temporary church. My dad goes to the hunky punky church. I go to the teen part of the church. And, then, you know, the little, my little brothers and sisters, they go to the, the, the kitty on the choo choo train kind of church. And grandma goes to the old fart service. I know I'm not supposed to say fart. With that kind of crap involved in churches today. Ridiculous. And not forget the works of God. Ask any Baptist church in America. Any, anyone, teenage and younger, as they're coming out of the church, pick out every plot. Tell me about the story of Jonah. I've heard three different stories out of Baptist churches about Jonah. Ask them, well, what, did, what did Jesus do when there was a storm at sea? Ask them. What message did Jesus preach from the boat to the people on the boat, to the people on the shore? Ask them. Come on, these churches today, they have enough stories, 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 but not enough Bible. Ask Jesus, you know, with, with, the, with the loaves of bread and two fish. Ask him about the story of that. Ask him about David and a giant. Let's see if they even know that one. What about the three Hebrew boys? Let's ask him about that one in the furnace. Do they know him? Or do they know about little stupid vegetables talking to you? You know why vegetables are talking to Christians? Because Christians are vegetables. They're retarded. They gotta have vegetables talking to them. There's no meat of the word. You're still in vegetables of the word. You're carnal. Grow up. Fools. Fools. And fools again. And declare them unto their children. That they might see the hope of God. Not forget the works of God. But keep his commandments. Go to all the world and preach the gospel. Is that happening? I got more Jehovah Witnesses that have come to my door. And as far as my time since I've been saved, only few Baptists ever come to my door. Few. You must have children's night, wife's night, husband's night. 
And when you go to church, the, the time that people go out visitation, very few people are there. But you got a pizza party, you got a fellowship, you got fun and game, you got bowling, you got bingo, you got more people that show up for that crap than what matters. And might not be as are their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation. Here we are. Here we are. You read what God thinks about the church, Revelation chapter 3? That set not their heart aright. Oh, that's today. Whose spirit was not steadfast with God. That's today. And that's where Israel is now. The children of Ephraim, let's give you an example, being armed. They had, they had guns, got gun rights, got my gun, got the right to carry my gun, got in the gun. You can take my Bible, you can, but you can't take my gun. I see more bumper sticker and things about guns than I do about Jesus. Carrying bold. Turn back in the day of battle. Ha! It came time to use the, use the weapons. They turned back. They ran. That's interesting. They kept not the covenant with, the covenant with God. They walked away from God. And refused to walk in His law. So I... The result of Ephraim, do you think they taught their children about God and their children talking about God and their children talking? No! They were cowards for God. So are Christian families today. And forgot his work. So if they forgot his works, then they can't tell their children because they forgot. Many people forgot where Genesis is in the Bible. Some people even forgot where their Bible is. I've seen that in Christian houses. It's time to go to church. Oh, where's my Bible? I don't know where my Bible is. Where's my Bible? should be on your reading table. That's the remote control. The TV guide. And his wonders. That he had showed them. And for the nation of Israel, God has shown them great, excellent wonders from the time they started in Egypt. And through Elijah and Elijah, miracles. And David, a little shepherd boy in a little rock, conquered a giant for the nation of Israel. They never got forgotten. I wonder how many Jewish boys and girls coming out of synagogue or temple service. How many, how many of them can you ask the stories? Of the Old Testament. How I many would they remember? Would they know who uh, Nehemiah is? Could they name the first king of Israel? Talk about the Jewish children. Marvelous things did he, God, in the, in the sight of their fathers. All through the book of Exodus, all through Numbers, all through the wilderness journey, all through Elijah, all through Elijah. All the battles that were supernatural that only God could have won. Jews require a sign and God gave them signs. God told the king, he said, you're going to die. I don't want to cry. I don't want to cry. Isaiah comes in. Calm down, King Hezekiah. God says he'll give you 15 more years. What's my sign? All right. You want ten you want the 10 degrees of sundial to go past? You want the sun 10, 10 degrees of sundial to go ahead? Look. Have it go back. And it was such a phenomenal, such a wonder. The stargazers of Babylon came. And they came to God. In, in Israel, in, in Jerusalem. They show up, the, the heavens make a big, drastic move, and the, and the stargazers come to Jerusalem and say, what did your God just do? The Babylonians knew more than what Israel knew in Judah. Israel's already gone far into captivity by then. 
Judah's about to go into captivity. And the Babylonians come up. Your God did something. What was it? And Hezekiah shows them right. And they're making a list and checking it twice. So when they come and destroy Jerusalem, we get everything. So Nehemiah and Ezra will have it all. I wonder how many Jewish people just knew what I just said. I wonder how many Christians knew what I just said. I don't read the Old Testament. What do you read? I read Harry Potter. I read Veggie Tales. You foolish. Foolish. K G K J B Bible. King James 1611 Bible. Get it. Get rid of the other modern crap and read your King James Bible. I don't know why God gets. I don't just. I keep forgetting where I'm at. Marvelous things did he in the sight of the fathers in the land of Egypt, Exodus, in the field of Zoah, Zoan, Zoan, Zoan. That's Egypt. That's the entire book of Exodus. And how about the events that God did after Exodus? The entire Egypt, Egyptian armies come. Dun -dun 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 -dun. God opens the Red Sea. They walk on dry land. They cross the Red Sea. The Egyptians come across. We're going to get them. God closes up the Red Sea over them. And they have found those chariots and the chariot wheels on the bottom of that ocean. I think we come from the Big Bang. I think, oh, they found a dinosaur bone. They found one bone, and the dinosaur had blonde hair. He had blue eyes. He had a little pouch for his little babies, and he loved to eat berries. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Don't offend my race of people. Change the history. Change the history. Read today they're taking the Indian the Indian face off Land of Lakes margarine because it, it Take all the panty waste peoples and throw them out of America. Let's get some real people in America. Let's get some godly men in America. Let's get some godly mothers in America. Get rid of the other phonies. You know why they won't leave America? Because they will not survive in another country. If women declare rights in Afghanistan, they, they'd be abused. You imagine walking up to the Russian government and saying, I got rights. Yeah, you got rights. Go to jail. Never be heard from again. Try to tell China, oh, we're going to start a religion. <laughs> Not in China, you won't. He divided the sea. There's the Red Sea again. And caused them to pass through. And he made the waters to stand up as a heap. That don't happen every day. See, now we're, we're, we're coming out of Exodus. We're going to go back into Exodus, Lord willing, tomorrow night. What wonderful things. He, uh, and what Jewish children today can actually tell you what happened at the Passover and that night. How much Jewish history are being, you know, maybe they're teaching them right. I don't know. I, I don't go to synagogue. But as far as the history has been messed up in this day and age, I'm going to safely assume it's not being taught. Maybe it is. But I don't know how Jewish history can be taught correctly when they can't get the Passover that happened Thursday. Correct. If they can't get the Passover correct, and they are out of the will of the holy and righteous God of Abraham, <coughs> Isaac, and Jacob. How can they teach what they're supposed to teach right? How many children over the years since Jesus has come? How many children go to their fathers? Does it, fathers, it says here we're supposed to go to Jerusalem. How come we're not going to Jerusalem? Uh, they're gonna, they had to change that story because they probably got sick and tired of the kids saying we've got to go to Jerusalem. Maybe. I, don't, I could be wrong on that. In the daytime, also he led them with a cloud. And that cloud is very important because that's a second advent reference. 
That cloud in the Bible, that's something to discover. Every day there was a cloud that showed them where to go. Every day. And not just a cloud, what? And all the night with a light of fire. When night came, that cloud turned to fire. And when the when the daylight came and it came, it went back to a cloud and it showed them right to the way to the promised land. Interesting cloud. Sometime our GPS, as you'll read story, will lead people in the middle of nowhere. They had a GPS one time. It was a location that was leading people right in the middle of a lake. And people were getting in that lake. We had a GPS one time. We ended up in the projects. We had a GPS one time. We got washed. We got stuck somewhere in Washington, D.C. It's some kind of GPS system of God. He claimed the rocks in the wilderness. And gave them drink as out of a great depth. From water, from rocks came water. When was the last time that happened? Oh, yeah, I, I, I've had nice water come from rocks out of a river in Connecticut. And we had a place where we would go fill up water, fresh spring water that came out of a rock. That's not the story here. Here's this rock sitting there dry as a bone in the wilderness. And Moses went up to it at the commandment of God, and it brought forth water. That don't happen every day. We're looking at what God has done for Israel. This is the same God that suffered and died upon Calvary's cross that was buried and arose again the third day according to scriptures that was able to save our soul. That's my God. He brought streams out of the rock. Paul says that rock is Jesus. We have a we have a hymn. Our rock, uh, that rock is Jesus. I forget how it goes. The Roman Catholic Church has a rock that's Peter. Only thing that can come out of Peter's death. Uh, my rock ain't Peter. It's Jesus Christ. Now Peter was a wonderful, great apostle. He was a great disciple that kept bothering Jesus. Would you base your religion on the one that followed Jesus and questioned Jesus and denied Jesus and, and had all problems with Jesus as Peter? But that's their rock. My rock is Jesus Christ. The one that forgave Peter. The one that comforted Peter. Peter the one that helped Peter. And caused waters to run down like rivers. Why? So they could drink. It was water that they can drink. Them and their animals. And they sin yet more, as man would do, for all had sinned and come short the glory of God. And they sin yet more. I've had people tell me, well, show me God and I'll believe. God showed himself miraculously and wonderfully to the children of Israel, and they still gave him a hard time in the wilderness. Matter of fact, the ones that were in the wilderness, minus their children and Caleb and Joshua, they didn't get to go in the promised land. They sinned yet more against him by voting the Most High God in the wilderness. I probably provoked the Lord myself today as a Christian with my sins. As I walk through this wilderness called earth. The world. What does the world produce? It produces nothing but losers. That's why God says go in all the world and preach the gospel. Because that world is just dead. Christ is life. He said I am the water of life. And they tempted God in their heart, in the heart. With the heart, man believes in the righteousness. What do they believe with their heart? They're tempting God. James says, 4 3, you can't be tempted. God can't be tempted, but they tempted God. They tried God. They got upset. God got upset with them by asking me for their lust. 
They were asking for food that, God, we're getting sick and tired of this man. And God, we're getting sick and tired of Give us something better. Give us T-bone steak. Give us shrimp. Well, you can't have shrimp. Can't ask for lobsters, but give us the best. God, we want a five-star restaurant out of you. Catering service. And we don't want to pay for it. Yay! That's what the devil said. Yay! They spank against God. After all that God has done from the time that, you know, to get Pharaoh to get them out of Egypt. All that God has done. God's a meeting. What are we having for dinner, dear? We're having manna soup. Again. They probably got tired of that water. I like to have some wine. They, not, they didn't have wine and all that in the wilderness. They had water. Water and manna. Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? See, they weren't happy. They weren't happy. Come on, God, you give us something better in this wilderness? They weren't thankful. They forgot all that God did in Exodus. They forgot all what God did in Egypt. Because if what God did in Egypt and what God has done in Exodus, I'm sure he can take care of you in the wilderness. And he would ask, ask nicely of God, say, God, you know, we this manna, he getting a little, you know, we thank you for the manna. We really do, but can we have a, just a new taste? Please, Lord. Can we run into some chicken or whatever? Better out here. Because they got quail. Yay! They spank against God and said, Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Behold, he, uh, Moses, smoked the rock that the waters gushed out and the streams overflowed. That was a mighty powerful rock. And they drank and all the animals drank. Overflowed. That means much more than what needed. Can he give bread also? <laughs> Can he provide flesh for his, for his people? His people. We're your people, God. Take care of us. And they weren't to say, Lord, okay, we're in the middle of a desert here. We're in the middle of a wilderness. There's nothing here. Uh, we need a little food. Please, Lord. Thank you for getting us out of Egypt. Lord, there's nothing here, Lord, please. No, come on, God. What can you do for us now? That's what Christians do. You know, the prosperity of God. Okay, Lord, what can you do for me now? What have you done for God? People are upset because I'm, I'm praying to God. I'm looking for a wife. I'm out there doing things for God. I'm out there witnessing, telling people about Jesus. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to give up. But then Christians sitting back not doing nothing. They're playing the lottery. Come on, God, make me win to scratch. Come on, God, let my lucky numbers come in. Lord, I'm going to Las Vegas next week. Come on, Lord, help me get the money. And I can tell you, a Bible preacher's got a church over in Las Vegas for all the losers who end up stuck in Las Vegas. How come God didn't answer me? Because God doesn't work in gambling. Therefore, the Lord heard this. The Lord hears us. And was wroth. See, he wasn't just asking for God. It wasn't like what I do at the at the beginning of every month. Say, Lord God, I gotta do the bills. Help me with the bills. Bless me, work out the bills, and bless us and help us with the with the grocery bill. And I don't go into the grocery store looking for the best. I don't look into the grocery store to, to get the high expensive thing. I look for the cheap things. I look for the bargain. I look for what God can bless. And I come home and say, Lord God, thank you. My house is filled with food. Thank you, Lord. 
Tracy needs to get all upset. I can't fit the stuff. Thank the Lord. Thank God the house is now full. If people get their house full of food and get the house full of things, yeah, come on, Lord. What else are you going to do for me? You can, use a, you can use a raise at the job. You don't need a raise. God just took care of filling your house. You want a raise at work and you can't put tithes in the church. So a fire was kindled against Jacob and anger also up against Israel. God gave him God gave him fire. Here, cook this. You. Put a fire in your butt. Because they believed not God. Now that is the problem. I am praying for a wife. I pray for my bill. I pray for the, for the Lord. I believe God can do it. There are people out there. God do this for me. Do you believe in God? No. I let my light shine. I'm good. I've got religion. You got yours. That's not believe in God. I know my God is able. And my God has blessed me personally throughout my life. And I know he can bless me again. And I know he gets angry at me when I've sinned against him. And I know he shows mercy against me when I sin against him. I know he shows me grace against me when I have sinned against him. I know my God is able. And trusted not in his salvation. This country, God bless America, and God we trust. One nation under God, and you don't even believe in God. You don't even know who God is. And when the rapture happens, you're going to find out you don't know who God is. Because only those that are known of God will be called up. Imagine three idiotic words. In God we trust. One nation under God. Whatever the other one is. This country doesn't trust in God. I don't like Obama. He gives us money. I like Obama now. I don't like Donald Trump. He gives us money. Ooh, he's nice, isn't he? You, you Republicans forgot about how much you hated Obama when he gave us the stimulus money. Oh, boy, but Donald Trump gives us stimulus money. <laughs> how many of you thank God? How many of you are going to tithe that money? Let me tell you. I've got a check in my back room where I keep my checks for church. There's a check there for my church. But the Lord gave me the, the Lord gave me the stimulus money. Not Trump. The Lord did. How's that? I don't give Donald Trump any credit. I don't give Obama any credit when we got it from Obama. God gave it and God got his part. How's that? I mean, you Christians out there, I'm a Christian. I'm saved. Thank you, Donald Trump. What about all you Trump haters? You return your check. Oh, who gave you it? God gave it. Not Trump, not Obama. God gave it. Because they believed not God and trusted not in salvation. I believe in salvation. Salvation is Jesus Christ. I don't eat Jesus. I don't drink Jesus. I receive Jesus. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Though he had commanded the clouds, that clouds again, from above, and opened the doors of heaven. Study those doors in heaven. One time the doors of heaven, I mean the windows of heaven were opened up and Noah and his family were saved in the earth. There's a famine in the land, I think it's Elijah. And he says, you know, the doors of heaven... And it had rained down manna, there's the manna, upon them to eat. And had given them the corn of heaven. There's that manna. Man did eat angels' food. God took the food out of the angels to give to his people Israel. And they weren't happy. It came to a part, I said before, with the manna, we got manna sandwich, we got manna seed, we got manna roast. Manna this, manna that, fried manna. I mean, you could cook manna any kind of way it said. 
Manna mushrooms. Salad with manna. Manner of choice. Manner of speaking. What's the manner? Even that. That manner, the way it sounds, sounds good. It's not, it's not like a kind of a biscuit kind of, like a fried dough. Now, I can eat fried dough all the time. My sugar says no. I bet you it wasn't high in sugar. I bet you it wasn't loaded with fat. I bet you it wasn't bad for you. But that wasn't good enough for them. No, oh, they wanted the steak. They wanted the, the the upside down pineapple cake. They wanted the dessert. They wanted a buffet. They wanted to get what they wanted and not have to pay for it. You know what that's called in America? It's called a welfare system. I'm kicking everybody today, am I? He rained down man. Man did eat angels' food. So you know where the world gets their products from? Angel food cake. That's nothing like the man in the Bible. And then you got the devil's food cake. Really? Just trying to copy the man. He caused the east wind to blow in heaven. God controls the weather. It's raining on our parade today, our picnic, it's raining. Well, maybe God thought somebody else needed the rain and is much more important than your picnic. There's other people in the world besides you. And these are people, Jesus first, others next, me last. It's raining on our picnic, our whole day's ruined. And there's a farmer saying, oh, thank God for the rain, my crops been waiting for it do what I do just love rain and the thunderstorms and the, and the, and the lightning and all. I love that I don't like the sun being made. and by his power not the weatherman honey what's the weatherman say for the weather today it's going to be wrong so in one way the weatherman is ever going to be right for one. It's going to rain with a possible chance of, of cloudy. It may not be cloudy with the sun. It's possibly with flurries. It may get some snow and sleet. But it may be a chance of rain. But the possibility that it's going to be a nice clear sky. With the possibility that the sun is only going to have shine today. With another possibility. That's the only way the weatherman is going to get it right. And then you thank the weatherman when you got a beautiful day. You don't thank God. The weatherman's right. He says it's going to be a good... No, what about what God says? The power he brought in the south wind. So here comes the east wind, then the south wind. He rained flesh also upon them as dust. A dust storm. But it's not dust. And feathered fowls, it was quails, like as the sand of the sea. There were so many quails, quails there. It just, the whole area was just infested with fog. That's a lot of fog. That's a lot of food. They could eat fog. You know what it would be cruel? You know what the devil would do? The devil would have had owls fly into them. The devil would give them buzzards. And some of you don't have no idea what I'm saying. Because they couldn't eat owls. They couldn't eat buzzards. They couldn't eat those animals. The devil would give them animals they can't. Here, here's all the birds. You can't eat them. Ha <laughs> ha. God said, here's some birds. I gave you a law. And here's the birds you can eat. And I'm going to give you so many of them. You realize it said as the sand of the sea, they were bumping into the people and bumping into them. The birds were knocking each other out and falling to the ground. And the people were in there picking up, getting wailed by birds. According to what this passage said. They were getting beat up by their own food. Because God was angry with them. You, know, you want some food? Bam, right side of faith. Oh, thank you, God. Trying to pick it up. Wait, right there. Oh, man, I got feathers in my mouth now. Popping them over, knocking them over. See, that didn't really happen. Look how many fowls there were. Many. As it's in. 
And he, God, let it fall in the midst of their camp, round about their habitations. He brought the food to them like a waiter. Want something else? Here's your thinner. <laughs> Give me some. Can't, can't, can't see. Where are you, Derek? Can't. So they did eat. And were well filled. America calls it welfare because it's given by the government and workers. God, it's well fed. Like he fed the 4,000 and the 5,000. They were well fed. He gave them their own desire. It's not what God wanted to give them. Their own desire. Angels' food was just good enough. Not for the men. They were not exchange, exchange from their lust. Lust. Look at Romans 7.7. 7. Romans 7.7. 7. I'll show you about that lust. Romans 7, 7. I've seen people come and go. They don't like, that guy's, the guy's yelled at me. Is that what my preacher does on, on live stream? He's, oh, oh, fairy, little fairy tales, and little bunnies hopping around. And, oh, come on, kitties. Today's letter is S for sin, but we can't say sin. Romans 7, 7. What shall I say then? Is the law sin? Oh, i using that word again. God forbid. Nay, I have not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law has said, Thou shalt not covet. They're coveting. And in their coveting, they're lusting. God, I would love to have something better to eat. They got a whole thing filled with manna. Ain't good enough, Lord. Tired of manna. Tired of leftovers. But while their meat was yet in their mouth. I think Exodus... Uh, 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 I think Numbers says it was in their teeth. It's an expression. I could be wrong. The wrath of God came upon them. Why? God, the whole house is filled with food. <laughs> uh, what am I going to eat now? Are you going to thank God? Oh, yeah, God, thank you. What can we have now? That wasn't enough, God. More. So what is God giving to the world today? Giving them diabetes. Giving them cancers. Giving them food that's not food. Additives, preservatives. I remember a time my dad and I and the dog, we would open up a package hot dogs and eat them raw. Would not dare to do that today. I wouldn't even give my raw hot dog to my dog. I'd put that thing in a microwave. Who knows what the microwave does? The wrath of God came upon them and slew the fittest. Fattest, not fittest, fattest. The fat ones. The overweight ones. God said, you're going. You can't use the word fat. I forget what the word is. The word is fat. I'm fat. A doctor should, I, I, what's that? I can't think of a stupid word. Obese. I'm not obese. I told the doctor, I'm not obese. He goes, yes, you are. Look at your way. I said, it's called fat. Well, the nice word is obese. There is no white, nice word for fat. Take off your clothes in front of a, of a, of a room-sized mirror. It is not a pretty word. Fat. You're ugly. My body's ugly because of fat. Get it right. And smoke down the choice of I mean, the chosen men of Israel. I think the chosen men of Israel, I think that means Israel was chosen. They were God's people. And they were God's people and they sinned against God. like, you're going. And listen, if God has attacked his own people, 
What do you think he's going to do to those that are not God's people? Oh, God hates the sin, but he loves the sinner. Depart from me, workers of iniquity. I never knew you. I just love you so much. Bye-bye. It's like one of those puppet shows. Bye-bye. Oh, it makes me mad they have a female Jesus. And Christians are going to flock to that because it's some sing some famous singer's daughter who had relations with little boys, reportedly. And he couldn't even find his other glove. And he was just the king of soul. Well, I got the king of kings. I'm having fun. You may not be. For all this they sinned. Still. They sinned before they got the food, they sinned while they got the food, and they're singing, they're sinning, not singing, they're sinning while they're eating. While they're eating that food, they're thinking, I wish I had more. Waiter! That's God. Waiter! Could I have some red wine with this, whatever you have, whatever color wine you have with quail? And God was sat over there like a waiter. Who does he think he is? I gave him the best cable. I gave him the best food. Who's that guy I think he is to tell me? I'll tell you what I'll give you. I'll give you some fire from the stove. <laughs> fat. Fatness. God called them fat. I bet you new Bibles probably say obese. I don't care about new Bibles. They're terrible. They're wrong. And believe not for his wonder, wondrous work. They did not believe that all those quails were from God. You believe that? They just happened to come into the camp. You mean of all the places of that wilderness, they just happened to be where Israel is? Oh, yeah. I just happened to have a coupon to save 25 cents. No, God did it. I always, I always thank God when I look at the register and, you know, oh, the, you know, sir, this was marked down. Thank you, God. I didn't know that. Sometimes the cashier would say, you know, if you get this one, they're cheaper than this. Say, really? Okay. Thank you, God. I thank the cashier for being nice, but I thank God. Sometimes I go get two if I really need it. They sin because they did not bless God. Oh, what the church is doing today. Therefore, their days... Did he consume in vanity? Killed them all. Vain. They died in vain. Worthlessness. And their years in trouble. They had problems and troubles. Because they sinned against God. It's almost like the Lord's Supper. People are sick. People die. They're asleep. Because they don't take it as they should take it. With great thought for God and Jesus. What's it almost like? Imagine, you met what Paul says about the Corinthian church. It looks like the Lord's Supper. They were going up for seconds and thirds, and they were running out for the people who had not had the Lord's Supper. That's what it looks like to me. Pigs. Well, can't call Jewish pigs. That's unclean. Bat. God said that. Bat. I didn't say I said that. God said that. Bat. When he slew them, they sought him. Oh, God, not the police. God, help me. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. That's the repentance of I got caught doing something wrong. <laughs> we watched a program one time. The girl said, I'm going to cry before the judge. She cried before the judge and said, oh, I feel sorry for you. All right, I'm not going to charge you. And she got out of the room. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> they returned and inquired early after God because God was beating their butt. That's why you say, all right, come here, son. You're going to get a spanking. <laughs> I tell my children, I haven't done nothing yet. And then those famous words, I'm going to give you something to cry for. And then the words after that, it'll hurt me worse than hurt you. And they remembered that God was their rock. The ones who finally got out of all that, and, and you know what? God is able. And the high God, their Redeemer, and we'll pick up verse 36 on. Lord willing, tomorrow night. We're going to stop right there. We will pick up Exodus and Egypt again. Lord willing. 